In this video, we'll tell you all about the data which goes on in the exoskeleton and how this data is analyzed. Then, we'll discuss future possibilities on how data might make an exoskeleton smarter in the future. So what kind of data is there in the exoskeleton? Well, there's the data which comes from the input device, as this is where the pilot selects their gate. Then, there are the sensors and encoders, which we've covered in the reading material. This is where the data on battery performance, joint angles, and temperature of the joints comes from. There are a lot of sensors in the exoskeleton, and so there is a lot of data. But there is even more data which goes on in the exoskeleton. Now, we could spend a whole course on just the software schematics of our exoskeleton, but since we only have this lecture, we'll stick to the most important stuff. This is a simplified version of our data pipeline. The different sources of data are processed in the computer in the backpack of the exoskeleton. We refer to this computer as the master. This name comes from the data communication protocol that we use, the Ethercad protocol. All of the sensors and joints are connected to this computer via Ethernet cables. These cables transmit all the data. To make the data pipeline easier to understand, let me give you an example. Say the pilot selects the walking gate in their input device, and the first subgate of this gate is to lift the left ankle. The data is then processed from the input device to the master computer. The master then first sends data to the left ankle motor controller. This motor controller then starts the motor of the joints and sends data on the motor performance back to the master. The master computer and the motor controller then keep sending data back and forth to each other, but most importantly, the joint moves. These are already quite a few steps from gate selection to movement, but there are actually more. At every step along the way, safety checks are happening in the exoskeleton. For these safety checks, data from the sensors and encoders is added to the data pipeline. Most of these safety checks are automatically calculated in our master computer, but there are some safety checks we keep an eye on as bystanders. Whenever the exoskeleton is turned on, we refer to our team as bystanders. One of the team members will act as a human monitor who watches what goes on in the exoskeleton. Here, you can see the dashboard that they see if they are monitoring the exoskeleton. In the dashboard, they can see what gate is currently happening and what processes are going on internally. The data of the exoskeleton is then also logged to our internal server so that our data analyst can look at this later. Currently, our data analyst does most of his analysis to figure out why something went wrong in the exoskeleton. If an ankle didn't move correctly, or if a knee became very hot during a training session with our pilot, they can analyze the data to see what exactly happened. They can then compare this data to data from previous practices to see why these errors may have got cured. Now, data analytics can also be used to improve the gates that we design. In its most simple form, this can be using temperature data to know if a gate might ask too much from an exoskeleton. If we created a gate in which the knee has to lift up very quickly, this asks a lot of power from the motors, which then become very hot. The temperature sensors can show us this and tell us that we might have to lift our knee a little less quickly. For this analysis, you can also look at graphs on how much power the motor is sending to these joints. Two more advanced ideas which we are working on are both to analyze how good our gate actually is. One way to do this is by placing strain gauges on the crutches that our pilot use. Strain gauges are very small pieces of wire which could measure how much pressure the pilot is putting on the crutches. If they are putting a lot of pressure on their crutches, it means the gate is quite heavy for them. By using the data from the strain gauges, we could compare different gate patterns and see which one costs our pilot the least amount of force. Then there are the pressure sensors in the foot soles. These measure how the weight of our pilot is distributed and can tell us how well balanced our gates are. 
Again, we can use this data to compare different gait patterns to each other. But this type of data analytics we are discussing is all manually observed and analyzed. Wouldn't it be cool if the exoskeleton could learn from the data and adjust the gates all on its own? Yes, this is the future that we would like to see happening. But in order for the exoskeleton to automatically adapt its gait based on some kind of data, there's a lot that needs to happen. For example, say we want our exoskeleton to automatically straighten its knees if the pilot is leaning too much forward. Then we need a sensor which measures how much the pilot is leaning forward, a rule for the sensor on when leaning too much forward is measured, and we need a rule for the exoskeleton on how much the knees must then be straightened. Before we can make these rules, we need to study the correlation between the data from the sensor and to what degree straightening the knees actually works. For this, we must do a lot of tests with our pilot in the exoskeleton and continue analyzing the data ourselves. Maybe straightening the knees doesn't help at all to prevent the pilot from falling over and makes it only worse. So before our exoskeleton can use data analytics to automatically adapt its gait, we ourselves first need to analyze how the data from sensors is affected by different gates and vice versa. Now there are a few more cool sensors which could be very useful in the future to make our exoskeleton smarter. I want to share two of these with you as they are both options we have looked into at Project March. The first are inertial measurement units or IMUs. These are electronic devices that can measure a body's specific force or the orientation of a body. Right now at Project March, we are only placing the IMUs in the backpack to track the movement of the exoskeleton. We use the data from this sensor for our balance algorithm calculations. But we'll cover more on that next week. Then there is the idea of LiDAR, which is a method for measuring distances by emulating the target with laser light and measuring the reflection with a sensor. It is the most advanced version of creating eyes for the exoskeleton. However, there are more sensors which you could place on the exoskeleton to observe its environment. The exoskeleton could in the future then see a staircase coming and automatically adapt its gait from walking to stairs. Making exoskeletons smarter sounds like an ideal feature, but the issue with making exoskeletons smarter is that you don't want your pilot to lose control of the exoskeleton. If they are walking towards a staircase, it doesn't have to mean that they want to climb it. They might simply want to talk to someone who is standing on top of the staircase. Now, we ourselves don't have an answer yet on how to make an exoskeleton smarter and still keep the pilot in control. But I thought I'd leave you with an interesting question to think about. <laughs>